My name is Akemi Soroe Tanaka. I'm a lecturer of Japanese culture and I am a guest speaker in Aime Convention all over UK and America, Canada, Holland, Norway, and I really like meeting Aime fan. Myself, I like Studio Jubilee, especially Neva Totoro. So <laughs> and this lecture, History of Kimono, when I did this lecture in London College of Fashion. I live in London, and when I did the lecture in London College of Fashion, teachers and students, a lot of people came, and they were so interested in Japanese history of kimono. And here, now, I know you are in Ayakon because you like Japanese culture and anime, and this is my first lecture in Ayakon. I I was in Ayakon many, many times, but this year, this is my first lecture, and I am so happy to meet somebody I know before and new people. And today I do history of kimono, tomorrow Japanese etiquette and Japanese history and Japanese traditional dance and history of Japan. And through my lecture today and tomorrow, I'm very, very happy to know you. Because for me, I am Japanese and everything is so normal. But for you, you do not know some Japanese culture. And my special lecture is history of kimono, Japanese history, and Japanese Shinto religion. Religion. Because here, you have religious study, but you learn Christianity or Buddhism or Hindu, but not Japanese religion. So that's my another topic. And also, Bushido. Bushido is way of samurai warrior, philosophy and thinking. And my family came from samurai family. So it's very, very happy to talk about the way of samurai thinking from the real life. And that's very, very good. You are here in Ayakon, and I am here from London. So let's learn each other. And from you, I really learn a lot because I want to know what you are interested in. So today, first I will show you history of kimono, then I'd like to have feedback, any subject, not only Japanese fashion, but also culture, then I will use this, your question, tomorrow's lecture. So, first time, you can see my costume kimono, and this is only from Battle of 1185. AD 1185, there's a big battle in Japan. Before that, 9th, 10th century in Japan, aristocracy, they were the top people in Japan. And aristocracy's ladies' costume not like this, very long and at least 12 layers. And they were not allowed to walk outside. When they go out, they used a carriage and went out. And Battle of 1185, aristocracy, so I think you know the word samurai. Yeah, samurai. And samurai, literally meaning is serve for the aristocracy. That's samurai means. And the Battle of 1185, samurai, who has to serve for the aristocracy, and the aristocracy, there's a battle. And aristocracy inside, they've got the red flag. And the samurai, they put a white flag. So we say white dragon and red dragon's battle, AD 1185. And my family was white dragon side, like samurai side. And samurai won the battle. And after the battle of 1185, ladies' costume became like this. I can run and walk and very, very Practical in the past, instead of fun, the lady got dagger. <laughs> so, yeah, so very practical. And when the dragon side, my family came, and that's why my uncle's house is near Kamakura. Because the first shogun, Minamoto clan, that's um, built up in Kamakura. We say Kamakura period started, but um, AD 1192. So, 
So now you can imagine after the battle, ladies' costume became like this. So our emperor, so I like compare, comparing English and Japanese because I'm so happy living in this country. In Japan, after World War II, all the Japanese people have to learn American English because in the history, Japan lost the war, World War II, that is the first time we lost. Then America, MacArthur came and occupied Japan. So before that, Japanese people studied British English. But after the World War II, Japanese has to study American English. And that is, that's why if you go to Japan now, many Japanese people speak American accent. And I like living here because England and Japan, English people, Japanese people, so similar. For example, you live in an island, and we live in an island, far east, and you have the queen. We have the emperor. Our emperor is 125th generation. So when I start this lecture about costume, that is the time starting our emperor. And English people, mm, if you compare to the Spanish and Italian, English people are a bit reserved and a bit shy and make a proper cue. And if you see Japanese... <laughs> 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 no, 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 it's time to sign up for the masquerade. <laughs> <laughs> but if you come to Japan, Japanese are similar compared to Chinese and the Korean. Japanese are a bit reserved and shy and make a very proper cue. If you come to Japanese bread trains platform, there is a line and everybody makes a proper cue. So it's very interesting. All over UK, you have the castle. And in Japan, all over Japan, there are many castles. So it's very, very interesting to compare your culture and Japanese culture. And yes, if you compare the American culture, again, English and the Japanese are similar. Because when you have a party, you have a dress code, like white tie, black tie. And Japanese, we have a dress code about kimono. So a lot of things. And I like your feedback while I'm talking, like hand up and ask me the question. I really appreciate your question. So first I will start the history of costume in Japan. Then I will ask you the feedback from your knowledge. Yeah? So first, this one. I will start now. Third century in Japan, and in those days, Japanese religion is Shinto. Still now, religion is Shinto. Shinto is a harmony with nature. And you can see, third century in Japan, the hair accessory is from the wood, like leaves. And the style of this one is from China. If you see the Chinese costume in those days, it's very, very similar and a lot of layer. And still here, that this place is similar. And this is also similar to Korean costume as well. Next one, same uh, era, third century. And if you see the hairstyle, up. So from now on, um, please check the hairstyle as well, because depending on the era, hairstyle is different. And this third century, hair up and uh, um, accessory, the hair, and also the color combination. A lot of different color that came from China, Tong Dynasty, and a lot of layers. And this is exactly the same style as in Tong Dynasty in China. And uh, today I show the costume, they are high rank people, like aristocracy or royal family. They had this kind of costume. And this fan is not like this fan. That is Chinese style fan. And the Tong Dynasty, the costume, and the, can you see the makeup? So she's got something here, and that's the Tong Dynasty's um, popular makeup. And still, uh, the, here is similar way, and you cannot see her hand. In those days, lady should not show the hand, the skin. So this costume hide her hand. hand. And this one, 
Yes, 4th century, and you can see hairstyle, very, very decorative hairstyle, and you, can, you cannot see her hand. And in Western world, when people design the dress for the ladies, like evening dress, you, they can see, they show the shape of the body. But Japanese and Chinese traditionally, they don't show the same shape of the body. Instead of that, luxurious, expensive, beautiful, embroidery cloth they use. And again, the decoration here in Western country, you have ring or earring or necklace, but for them, the decoration showing the wealth is hair accessory and the material of the cloth that is the showing off. And this one, do you remember 9th, 10th century ladies style? At least 12 layers of costume, very thin, beautiful silk. And now, can you see the hairstyle? It's changed. It's all hair down and very, very long. And the hair accessory has changed. And at least 12 layers, in those days, ladies enjoyed the color combination of kimono. And also, yeah, you can see the sleeves. The length of the sleeve is very, very long, and you can see the layer of kimono, and the hairstyle is very, very long, and uh, in those days, ladies were not allowed to walk outside with this costume, just in the car, carriage, and can you see the makeup again? They shaved the eyebrow and put fake eyebrow here, and very, very white. In those days, they wanted to show the status they don't have to walk. In Japan, it's like very tropical island, so only the poor people have to walk outside. That means they get suntan, but high rank people, they don't have to walk in the field. So showing the white skin is the, main, the meaning of status. And why they shave the eyebrow and put the fake eyebrow? Because in those days, still now in Japan, men, for example, the top man and the prince has a lot of mistresses, and those mistresses have to live together. So it's very, very hard for women because they feel jealous. So shaving the eyebrow means they don't express the feeling, they don't express their jealous and anger. And that's why I shave the eyebrow and put eyebrow on top of the one tomorrow. My lecture, one of the topics is Japanese women's position that's connected to this era. Still, some high status family, they continue the family tradition. And it's nice to see a lot of layers, beautiful um, material. Hi. And this one is the Kamakura period. Do you remember Battle of 1185? Lady could walk and fight. And that is the one after Battle of 1185. Lady's costume became like this. And before that, lady couldn't travel by themselves. But after this, they can walk like this. And still, sleeves are long. And hairstyle, long down. And you can see that hair accessory that is made of paper. And uh, still layers and layers. And you can see her shoes still the same as mine. And that is after Battle of 1185, Samurai ladies wear this kind of um, shoes, uh, guitar, and zori, and white tabby. Hi, next please. And this is a one lady travel. When lady travel, she's got a stick. And some ladies practice martial arts, like my daughter. She's a very, very strong martial artist. Once she's got a stick, she can do self-defense a lot. And also, can you see this hat? And when she travels, she wears a hat and this kind of lace because the high-status lady did not want to show their face, so hide uh, um, behind a veil. And also, there are several insects. So when she travels, avoiding the insect, she wears this kind of hat. And can you see the red one? The red here, that came from temple. 
So that is uh, like a uh, charm that Red Cross will protect this lady. And so here you can see some kind of necklace, and inside of that there is a paper from the temple, like good protection. And same, she travels, and when she wears a hat that like this, and uh, this is this kind of hat. It's like Vietnamese, but in Japan, 12th century, 13th century, they wear this hat and they travel. And this one, you can see her he head was covered with another kimono. And as I said, the red cross, that is the protection from the temple. And this one, she is a servant for the lady. This lady has something for her master. So she is following her lady. So probably have something, gift to visit some other people. And uh, can you, did you notice the legs is a bit shorter? It's more practical. And the sleeves is wider, like this. And she is the servant as well. And in Western country, you have handbag and bag. In Japan, when people carry something as a gift, they carry on the hand like this. We call, we use kuroshiki, like cloth and wrap with cloth. And pattern is a very, very Japanese pattern. And uh, you notice the hairstyle still same as Heian period, 10th century, and continuing this hairstyle. And she's a servant as well. And if you do the martial arts, like Kendo or Iaido, Japanese martial arts, nowadays Japanese martial artists wear this kind of skirt, like pleated skirt, and this in those days, 12th and 13th century, this was practical, so servant lady wear this kind of costume, but nowadays martial artists wear this costume. And this is 13th century, she's a merchant, she is selling fish. So can you see the basket? And inside the basket there's a fish, and in the town she saw the fish, and that hairstyle uh, she loved using the white cloth that came from Southeast Asia. And because she is selling a fish, you can see the sleeve is very, very short and practical. So now this um, costume changed very, very practical way, like Western shirts. And this one is, if you see the pattern of kimono, this is so new style, in those days it was called the new style because it was separated several ways, um, but this is the one crop. And it's like um, they dyed like candle dye, and shimeri sbori, like dyeing is special in those days. And they did the um, trade with Ming Dynasty in China, and the Ming Dynasty, they proud of the gold, so they used a lot of gold in those days. 13th, 14th century. And she is selling the cotton. Can you see the span? Can you see the cotton? So showing she is selling the cotton. Even the kimono pattern, she puts the cotton in her kimono. And again, she is a merchant selling something. So her hairstyle is like that, white cloth wrapped um, by white cloth. And as I said, in, they did the trading to the Ming Dynasty, and they used a lot of gold in those days, the kimono's pattern. And now you can see the sleeve is short, and also his, this belt. In the past, this belt was wider, but in those days, practically, the belt is very narrow. And you, yes, hi. And this one, again, you cannot see belt anymore. It's underneath of the clothes and sleeve is short. But a lot of gold. This is a very expensive kimono. 
uh, you can see the detailed pattern of the kimono, gold, and very, very Japanese style pattern. And this one, and now you can see makeup again. So she doesn't have eyebrow, again, fake eyebrow. That shows like she's in a high status person. And also the prince, got, prince and high rank people with a lot of mistresses. And women should not allow to show her emotion. And that is still nowadays in Japan, not only women, but also men, they don't show the emotion. If you come to Japan, you will see and a lot of layers of the kimono and the pattern. That pattern is Shogun Toyotomi clan's uh, family mark. So that means we can tell she is connected to Toyotomi Shogun's clan. And this one. So that one, you can see top and bottom like a different pattern, but actually it's in one cloth and the design was like that and that is new and sleeve is short and you cannot see the belt it's hiding underneath of the cloth and this one, yes, the pattern is very very Japanese and uh, still same era um, 14th century and uh, that is the time more practical and luxurious Gorgeous using gold kimono. Now the time changed. Can you see the hairstyle? Now hairstyle is up and she is a high rank prostitute. And that is Tokugawa family started to dominate the country AD 1600. There's a big battle in AD 1600 and Tokugawa family dominated the country and this prostitute costume looks very very expensive you can see beautiful embroidery and layer of the kimono and you cannot see the belt and the sleeve is very very short and costume makeup if you see the makeup again changed in those days the most popular makeup is making the lips very very small and uh, you notice the makeup changed in those days. And she is a child. And child, normally, this, this one especially, um, so it, she is with prostitute all the time, like serving together and learning how to act and education. And this hairstyle is for the child. And the obi, belt, now we can see obi, the, Gorgeous, luxurious, very thin obi, and sleeve is shorter. And now the beginning of Edo period, and they copied of this um, painting. And in those days, hairstyle is like this, and gold belt, thin one, and sleeve is like this. So Edo period. Uh, started um, AD 1600 and Japan crossed the country at the period. No foreigner were allowed to come to Japan, no Japanese were allowed to go out. So from this point, the costume changed because when Tokugawa family dominated Japan, they made a class system. And depending on the class, the costume is different. When I did a uh, lecture in the Victorian Albert Museum, I showed the hairstyle and the kimono in those era, Edo period, if you see the ladies' hairstyle and costume, you can tell the class, married or single. And this one looks, yeah, this is a kind of prostitute, but matured prostitute, and you can see hairstyle like this, complicated, and short sleeve, and obi, belt, again, you can see the thin Obi Bell and the pattern is very very Japanese traditional pattern. And this is uh, the popular dance in the mid of 17th century. And tomorrow I teach ta traditional Japanese dance and my dance I teach 
is new, only like 18th century dance, but this is the middle of 17th century. And you can see she wore two different kimono, and one side of the shoulder she took off, and she's showing a half underwear kimono and half normal kimono, and hair decoration is like a purple cloth and golden hair accessory. This was popular in those days in Kyoto, Asia to capital Kyoto, AD uh, 900 and, no, 794. And this one is, okay, in those days, as I said, if you see ladies' costume, you know the class. And this one is the normal um, merchant and the in from this time, ladies' costume changed. If you see the lady with short sleeve, that means she's married. And the lady's costume, the sleeve is long, that means she is single. So if we see her costume, she is married from this costume. And the belt is wider now, and sleeve is a bit longer. And you can see the very complicated hairstyle. To make this hairstyle, they have to pay the money to the hairdresser. So she is a married lady with, and her status is merchant wife. And in those days, they show the wealth hair with hair accessory. And this one, the same, and if you see the back of her costume, you can see how they tie the belt. And still now in Japan, there are over hundreds of different of tie. And depending on the party and the occasion, they change the tie. And this costume is a kind of semi-formal because on top, there are not so many pattern and a little pattern on top. And this is semi-formal costume and uh, yeah please remember this tie obi and this one is can, can you see the three and the accessory and uh, this is again uh, dancing but if you see the back of her kimono the time obi is the same style nowadays that means 17th century costume, still in Japan, we continue to wear and complicated hairstyle. Still now, if you go to the special place, you can do this hairstyle, but many people use wig at the moment in Japan. And this one, she is a princess. And the princess the costume, 17th century in Japan, and again, her hairstyle should be like this. And this is a, a going out outfit for the princess. And this one is a princess's mother. And you can see shaving eyebrow and on top of here putting a fake eyebrow. That means she's a very, very high status because she shouldn't show that emotion because the prince and emperor with a lot of mistresses and women shouldn't show the emotion. And this is the princess's mother's costume and the sleeve is short. And this is the princess's mother's servant. So she's got a servant all the time and servant carry something for um, princess or princess's mother and her kimono, you can see the back of the kimono, how to tie obi, and can you see the mark on the back and back of the sleeve? That is family crest, like coat of arm. So because she's a servant of this family, she put the coat of arm of her kimono, and once people see her, we know which family she's working for. And that is very, very traditional. Nowadays in Japan, 
we have all family crests, and when we attend the wedding ceremony or formal ceremony, we wear kimono like this with family crest, like black, then family crest mark is white. And people know which family he or she came from. That is a tradition, and hairstyle is like this. And this one is again for servant, servant costume. And you can see servant is carrying like this and like this. And this kimono is very, very casual kimono. And the, the sleeves becomes longer and those servants are single. That's why sleeve is longer. And you can see complicated hairstyle. In those days, if you see the hairstyle, you can tell a lot of things. And this is, uh, and also, can you see how back of the kimono? Very, very decorative knot. And this is, still now, we do this kind of knot to attend the formal ceremony. But in those days, not formal ceremony, like servant style. And beautiful hair decoration, this deco is very expensive. And this one is samurai, samurai's wife. And if you see the costume and the hairstyle and makeup, you can tell she is the wife of the samurai. Also, can you see the dagger here? They are samurai and wife, daughter, they were allowed to carry real sword. And in those days, the popular makeup, no eyebrow. So just shaved eyebrow and also very small lips. So her lipstick is, shows her lip is very, very small. That is uh, in those days, makeup and short sleeve. And the right hand is the wife of the samurai and the left the daughter of the samurai. Do you remember I said single lady wore the long sleeve kimono and married ladies the short sleeve kimono. So she is the daughter and she is single and you can see she can carry the real sword here and also know this obi. The belt is wide, much wider. And here you can see her pass. She can pass here. And this is Samurai's daughter. And back of the obi, how to tie. Again, it's very decorative and beautiful. Nowadays in Japan, when we attend the ceremony, we wear this kind of kimono. So it hasn't changed. Like from 17th century, we continue to keep the tradition, the same style. And this one is a samurai wife's servant. And she's a servant. And uh, if you see the back, it's very practical, not so decorative tie. There are over 100 different tie, and this is very simple. And you can see again, family crest. She's a servant. That's why she put her master's family crest, coat of arm, the kimono, the back, and back of the sleeve. And people can tell which family she works if you see her costume and makeup, no eyebrow. And this one is the normal merchant uh, daughter. In those days, the government made class system, four classes, and of course top emperor and shogun, then four classes, top class samurai, then farmer with huge land, artisan, then merchant. Merchant are the bottom of the class, but they are wealthy, and she is the merchant daughter, so, but there's a very, very strict rule what she can wear, so, if you see her kimono, you can tell this is a very expensive one, but um, they cannot wear that special silk. And uh, also, the kimono's obi belt is very, very wide. And even merchant can have family crest, the coat of arm, the back, and the back of the sleeve. And you can see 
to the front another coat of arm. So in Japan, the most formal kimono has five marks. That is the most formal kimono. And uh, yes, people can tell this is very expensive kimono. And this is uh, her mother, merchant wife. And very, very simple. And using gold. And very thin family, merchant. And very simple, and no eyebrow. And hairstyle is like this. But if you come to Japan and if you attend the tea ceremony, still now people wear like this style, exactly the same. Hairstyle is not like so decorative, but um, kimono is similar. And this one is merchant wife's servant. And the servant, their clothes is very, very practical, and the sleeve is not so long. And uh, you can tell how practical the kimono is. The simple color and not a lot of pattern. This is the one. And, ooh. So, thank you very much for listening and learning. And here, today is my first lecture. And this is just kimono. But as I said, a lot of things culture, culturally different. And I'd like to ask you, Mm, that's why you're here. <laughs> so, you said you like Japanese culture. And I am here today and tomorrow I will to teach you Japanese culture. That's my work, normally in London. I go to many, many places. For example, in London, bankers, lawyers, they have to go to Japan and they have to do the business meeting. So they want to know the etiquette. So, I teach them Japanese etiquette and also I teach language and Japanese culture. So here, you saw this one and feedback, oh, is there any question? Because tomorrow I do a lot of lecture and some people are new really and some people already I have met. Hi, Dozo! Good point. Man's clothes, yes. If you see the man, you can tell the status, especially in Edo period 80, AD 1600, because government made a clear code, and all the Japanese people have to follow. So if you see the man, just see the man, you can see the status, samurai, merchant, artisan, and you cannot tell married or single. Only the lady. You can see the lady's costume and you can tell married or single. And in this country, Western country, wedding ring. But in Japan, we don't have wedding ring. Just see the costume. And in man's case, it's not so obvious married or single. But lady's case, it's obvious. And here, anime fan, some people like the samurai, the civil war time. And Yes, the answer is if you see the man, just see men, you can tell which class, and that's obvious in those days. But good point, men. Yes, the starting of Amecon and Ayakon, anime convention, I'm here for really seven years, eight years, and I noticed more women, because the beginning of time, a lot of men, not so women, ladies. It's very, very good to see the ladies. And I like your feedback and question. Uh, Hi. Uh, the eyebrows. Eyebrows. It was only, only shown in the status as in the higher classes, the less as in like, you're going to get the, the fake ones. But the princess, she yeah. didn't have the fake ones. She had her own. Uh -huh. Was there any particular reason? Yeah, because the princess. Yeah, yeah, because princess is not married yet. Once they married, and also in those days, a high rank like prince, and they have lots and lots of mistresses. For example, have ever read Tale of Genji? So Genji is the name of the prince, 10th century, and he's got lots and lots of mistresses. And still now, that is the bestseller in Japan, like Bible bestseller in Western country. And this prince, Genji, and one garden, winter garden for one mistress, one spring garden for another mistress, 
and those women have to live together. It's terrible. So princess did not ha have to shave their eyebrow because not that well yet. But once they are married, they have to survive this kind of uh, world. So it's in Japan. Mm. <laughs> Good point. Is there anything? It's the history of costume, but I. Um, what's the difference in the kind of ties? I know uh, quite a lot of um, obis are tied with a bow at the back instead of the drop. What's, is there a difference in status or symbol with that? Yeah, good point. The tie. How to tie the knot, obi knot? And this is butterfly knot. And there are hundreds of different of knot. And depend on the ceremony and the party, you are invited. And also you are young, you are single or married and you choose the several, the one kind of knot. And that is a kind of, we have an etiquette book, and if you are invited to the party or ceremony, you check, and if you are not sure which knot, and you just call your friend. <laughs> <laughs> but it's very, very nice, because I am in England, I live in London, and when I was 18, I went to America, because as I said, in Japan, after World War II, all the Japanese people have to learn American English. So when I went to America, Los Angeles, California, study to study English, I was a bit confused because in Japan, when we have a party, we have a like invitation card, white tie, black tie, like you. We have a kind of dress code. But west coast of America, California, there was no dress code, and uh, it's it was quite different from Japan. And now I am in this country and I can compare a lot of things like, okay, we had a big battle, 80, 11, 85, red dragon and white dragon, and my family was drag white dragon side. But now I am in your country and I like, I like to learn your history, like, okay, white rose, red rose battle. So it's very nice for me to compare the history here. And America is quite a new country, so okay, we had a battle of 1185, and what happened to you? And who, 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 we don't have a country, so it's, it's really difficult to compare. So I really like living in this.